Pastos Biology Topics from the Study Guide Let's turn back to page 9.19 in the Study Guide. Let's again take a cell. This is the cell. And let's stick a teensy-weensy electrode in the cell. Now, an electrode can do two things. It can conduct current or it can detect current or charges. In this case, we would detect the negativity inside the cell. While we're discussing this, you can refer to the next figures on page 9.19 to follow along. To measure charges, we can use volt. So a volt technically is a measurement of the separation of charges. So if you have a 9 volt battery, that means 9 volts separate the positive and negative pole of the battery. The trouble is, cells are so tiny and a volt is so large, we have to use a millivolt when we're dealing with cells. And millivolt is designated this way, MV. Let's graph the voltage difference on the inside of the cell. This part of the graph represents the millivolts inside the cell. And on the average, it's about minus 70 millivolts. Now what that means is we stick the electrode into the cell and we get a measurement of minus 70. Now this is a cell at rest, any old cell. And we call this the resting potential. Now, what if we were to stimulate the cell at that point? Now, by stimulating the cell, it changes the permeability. And the most common change is an increase in permeability to sodium. Now, remember, sodium does not get into the cell too easily. But if you increase the permeability of sodium, excess sodium begins to move into the cell and this resting potential begins to rise like this. So this is due to increased permeability to sodium and increased sodium moving into the cell. As sodium moves in it becomes less and less negative. Think of it this way. Pretend that it's minus 70 millivolts inside the cell because there's an excess of 70 negative charges. If you bring one more sodium in, now the negativity is minus 69. Two sodiums in brings it up to 68, and so forth. Now, of course, that's terribly misleading. There are millions and trillions of negative charges inside the cell. Now, what happens after this is there's an immediate increase in permeability to potassium. The increase in potassium permeability, now remember, potassium is more abundant inside, leads to an increase in potassium moving out. So, now potassium moves back out and as you remove positive charges from the inside of the cell, the potential drops back down to resting potential. We call this change in potential a graded potential or a local potential. The graded potential stays in one spot. That doesn't make any sense yet, but it will. And these principles apply to all cells not just nerve cells. Now, how is that graded potential translated into a nerve impulse? Well, before we do that, we have to look at another type of graded potential. What if we were to apply another stimulus to a cell? But in this case, instead of increasing the permeability to sodium, it caused something else to happen. It caused chloride channels to open, increasing the permeability to chloride, and when that happened, 
excess chloride moved into the cell. And as excess chloride moved in, the resting potential dropped less than, more negative than minus 70. Now generally what happens is, there's, this is followed by uh, an opening of potassium channels leading to increased permeability to potassium and resulting in potassium moving in. And this would restore the resting potential. This is also a type of graded potential. Now let's summarize. Here's the millivoltage inside the cell. Resting potential is minus 70. When the cell is stimulated, one thing that happens is it causes sodium channels to open, thereby increasing the permeability to sodium, and excess sodium begins to move into the neuron or into the cell, causing the uh, resting potential to rise. This is immediately followed by an increase by an opening of potassium channels, leading to an increase in permeability to potassium, and because positive charges repel positive charges, potassium is repelled outward, causing this potential to drop back to resting, and we call this a graded potential. Let's look at the other situation. In this case, the stimulus causes something else to happen. It causes chloride channels to open, increasing the permeability to chloride, increasing perme chloride movement into the cell. This is immediately followed by opening of potassium channels, which increases the permeability to potassium, leading to increased movement of potassium into the neuron. Remember, opposite charges attract, the inside has become more negative, attracting potassium in. This too is a graded potential. Now let's look at a few terms. Let's look first of all at depolarization. Now remember we said a cell which has a difference in charges is in a polarized state. If that's the case, isn't it true that if it becomes less and less polar, that is a depolarization? Likewise, when the graded potential drops back down to resting, isn't it becoming repolarized? So that is a repolarization. Likewise, if we stimulate the cell so that the resting potential becomes more negative, and the prefix for more or greater than is hyper, isn't that a hyperpolarization? And the opposite condition, rising back up to resting, would be a repolarization. Now these are very useful terms. Keep them in mind.